Hello, it's good to be with you again today and to talk to you. I want to let you know about something that happened to me on Tuesday. I was walking down from the house on my usual hours walk out of the house and heading off towards Lacher Estuary, which is where I usually go. And I decided that I would take a slightly different journey. So I turned left and I headed down through roads that I'd never been along before. I saw places in my community that I never even realised existed. And eventually this path, this unfamiliar path, took me to a beautiful view, which there is a photograph now coming up now. That view is of Lacha Castle and I've lived in Lacha for 12 years and I have never ever seen the castle from that angle before. And I started to think about this. I wondered how many others of us in the, in the community have had experiences which are similar. Now that we've been told that we can't use our cars to go out and about, that we've walked down paths which we've not been on before, unfamiliar paths, and we've seen areas around our homes that we didn't even knew, know existed. When I was walking, I was talking to the Lord and I was asking him what we could chat about today in this service. And a Bible verse came into my mind, and I really think this is where God want us, wanted us to, to uh, what God wanted me to talk to you about today. I will lead the blind by ways they have not known. Along unfamiliar paths, I will guide them. I will turn the darkness into light before them and make the rough places smooth. These are the things that I will do. I will not forsake them. Isaiah 42 verse 16. And it was that phrase, along unfamiliar paths, that really jumped out to me. And I thought, yes, God, you have got something to say today. And so for the next 15 minutes or so, I'm going to try and express that and encourage us all on the journey that we're on right at this moment. The verse starts with this phrase, I will lead the blind by ways they have not known. A blind person will use their hands or a stick to feel for familiar objects or structures to help them move forward. But if they were to be put into a room or to an area that they were unfamiliar with, where there were no objects that they recognised and nothing familiar to help them move forward, they will quickly be, fe be feeling quite disorientated and vulnerable and potentially exposed to harm. The relevance of the Bible verse that I've read is so blatantly clear. We are really on an unfamiliar path. The usual structures that we touch every day that help us move forward as individuals and as a society have either been changed or have been taken away. From our simple daily routines, our freedom to go where we want, when we want, our jobs, our finance, our network of support right through to big economic structures around the world. Things have changed. There's been a sudden diversion and we find ourselves like that blind man on an unfamiliar path in an unfamiliar area walking along a, a way that is leaving us possibly feeling quite disorientated and vulnerable and even exposed to potential harm. We really need somebody to guide us. It's not a time to criticise world leaders and to point the finger at them because they also need someone to guide them. And I believe that the God who spoke out those words centuries ago, ago is speaking again today. He is saying, I will lead the blind by ways they have not known. Along unfamiliar paths, I will guide them. There's a more modern translation in the Message Bible and it reads like this. God says, I will take the hand of those who don't know the way who can't see where they're going. I'll be a personal guide to them, directing them through unknown country. I'll be right there to show them what roads to take, make sure they don't fall into the ditch. These are the things I'll be doing for them. I'll be sticking with them, not leaving them for a minute. I need to ask you a question today, and the question is this. Are you willing to let God take your hand and be your personal guide? We have a choice. We could try, try and make our own way through this crisis, make adjustments in our thinking, adapt our routines, put new routines and structures in place to help us feel in control again. Or we can put, put up our hand and we could say to God, Lord, I need you to guide me. I need you 
to lead the way. I need to follow you. I believe strongly with all of my conviction that when God hears that prayer, he answers and he gives wisdom and strategies and directions to those who ask. I also believe that there are people in crucial decision-making roles within society that are praying that prayer right now. God, guide me, help me, lead me. And for those leaders who don't have a God awareness, I really believe that there will be people within their organisations who are praying for them regularly. God, lead them, guide them. Whatever situation we're in right now, God's word to us is true. Whether we're in isolation, just trying to figure out how we're going to get our shopping in, or whether we've got a house full of kids and our patience is just wearing thin. Whether you are going out to, to somebody's home as a carer and you're worried because you haven't got personal protective equipment, or you might be you might be in the intensive care unit heading a shift up and you may be faced with really difficult situations to handle. God's word is for you today. I will take you by your hand. You might not know your way. You might not see where you're going, but I will be your personal guide. I will direct you. I'll be there to show you. I'll be there and I won't leave you for a minute. That's God's word for all of us whatever our situation right now. Have you ever gone on a journey and you haven't been prepared? I have, and it's really horrible. My mother and father-in-law, Linda and Kerry Williams, who actually are probably watching right now. Hi, Linda, hi, Kerry. They are the most organized people that I know, and their approach to going on a trip is really, really careful. They plan in advance and they get everything ready that they want to pack and they're ready to go away in advance of the actual date they're leaving. Michael and I, we have a slightly different approach and I think our approach to travelling is stressed Linda and Kerry out on a number of occasions because we're not nearly as prepared. But Linda and Kerry enjoy going to a specific location for their holiday and because of that they know exactly how to prepare themselves for that trip. But the trouble about this journey that we've all begun is that we don't know the exact details of what is ahead and because of that it's more difficult to be prepared. We don't know how long it's going to last, how things are going to pan out over the next few months, how it's going to affect us and our original plans for 2020, our education, our career pathways, our health. There are so many unknowns about this journey and we have to ask ourselves how can we prepare Imagine you or I were about to embark on a trek, say the Himalayas for instance. A really wise move would be get, to get advice from somebody who really knows the landscape and the location. And the safest way along that journey would be to have somebody as a guide, not just to follow, but also to listen to the advice they give on what to take and what to leave behind. You see, we could really easily put our trust in the local guide and follow every step that he took. We could have confidence that the journey would go really well. But there are practical things to need, that need to be sorted to safely navigate the unfamiliar path. And if we weren't prepared, if we wore the wrong clothes, if we wore flip-flops instead of walking boots, if we dragged a heavy suitcase instead of carrying a rucksack, these things would hinder our journey and however good and well informed the guide is, we would still be at risk of falling and injuring ourselves on the way. God is a good guide. He is well informed and we've already established that he wants to lead us. But there are things that we need to do as well as following him. We need to listen to his advice on what to take and what to leave behind so that we can be well equipped for the journey that lies ahead. God not only wants to lead us, but he also wants us to be equipped for the journey and he will equip us. He says in Hebrews chapter 12, let us run the race that is before us and never give up. We should remove our lives. This is Paul speaking, uh, one of the apostles. He says, we should remove our lives from our lives, anything that would get in the way and the sin that so easily holds us back. That Bible verse is a really good verse because it sums up 
what, how God wants us to prepare for our journey. He doesn't want us to be bogged down with attitudes and actions that will make things work worse and slow down our progress. He wants us to get rid of some things. He wants us to throw them off. And what things can we get rid of now in this time? It's time to let go of things that haven't been good for us or good for, the thing, for those people around us. Things like resentment towards other people, criticism and forgiveness. The people around us in our homes or even those that are not really involved in our lives anymore. Criticism, bitterness and forgiveness. Resentment towards these people can really hinder us and slow us down and can be a heavy burden for us to bear that we really can do without right now. It's being banded about that we are in a time when the reset button can be pressed. Time to start again. When we go through tough times, we often try and find things that we can learn from the experience. And I understand that. But recently I heard somebody say that maybe there are things that we need to unlearn. What can we unlearn at this time? What can we get rid of, throw off so we can lighten our load? Have we been holding on to a fence? Offence at others from hurt that's been caused, hanging on to self-hatred, self-criticism, regret even about previous things that we've done in our lives. These things will hinder us and they will harm us and they will slow us down. And God wants us to get rid of them. He wants us to leave them out. out. He wants us to leave them behind so that we are prepared for the journey that we're on. There's a second part of the verse that I read and it says this, I will turn the darkness into light before them and I will make the rough places smooth. And I guess for some of us, we would like to hold on to that second part of the verse as a promise to ourselves. But in order for us to benefit from the second part of the verse, we've got to look at the first part. We've got to be following the one who is leading. The guide who is able to lead us on this unfamiliar path knows what we need. God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, he knows. He knows that our load needs to be lightened. And in order for darkness to be made light and for the rough places to be made smooth, we need to follow him his way. Many of us over the years have misunderstood God and we've dismissed him as probably being irrelevant to the details of our lives, but he is totally relevant and now is the time to trust him. This week I was reading one of the news apps on my phone and at the end of an article there was an advert talking about how we need to be able to trust the news these days. And the, there was a heading for the advert and it read this. Trust has never mattered more. The phrase jumped out at me because it told me that society deep down is desperate for something or someone that they can truly trust because cynicism and suspicion drains our energy and strength. Trust really does matter. On this unfamiliar path, I cannot promise you an easy journey. I can't promise you a trouble-free path, but I can promise you this that he, God, is a trustworthy guide. When God says that he will turn the darkness into light before them, does it mean that he will take all the dark, difficult situations away, that we won't have any problems anymore? Well, eventually when we get into our eternity, yes, life will be amazing. But now while we are on earth, this side of eternity, while we are still living and breathing, I've lived long enough to know that there are some very challenging situations and dark times to face. Next week, I, I start six months of chemotherapy treatment, so I understand this. I'm walking through this journey now, but I also know the words that Jesus spoke in the chapter of John, uh, Gospel of John, chapter eight, and they're profound words. And he says this, I am the light of the world. And the person who follows me will never live in darkness, but will have the light that gives life. When we trust God as our guide and follow him, Jesus, the light of the world, is directly in front of us. His light captures our attention. 
Psalm 125 says that as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people. So if God surrounds us, then his light surrounds us. And that is why Jesus could say, the person who follows me will never live in darkness, but will have the light that gives life. Do we live in dark times? Yes, we do. Do we experience very difficult situations? Yes, we are. But somehow, quite miraculously, as we keep following him, our trustworthy guide, I know from my own experiences that it is possible to know supernatural peace in the middle of a storm, to know calm in trouble and light in the middle of darkness. There's another path spoken about in the psalm, and it's a well-known Psalm 23. In this psalm, the writer talks about being led along a deep, dark valley, shadowed by death and also along pools of refreshing waters where his soul is restored. In the middle of this psalm, he says, I will not be afraid for you are with me. Who is he talking about there? He's talking about God, his trustworthy guide, his good shepherd. He refers to the shepherd's rod and the staff bringing him comfort. He reminds himself that he has seen the shepherd skillfully use his rod to protect his flock against wild animals. He has observed the shepherd carefully lift a lamb from a crevice with his staff. He could walk through dark valleys which are deep, yet he could also be refreshed by clear waters because his good shepherd was his guide. Some of you watching this today You've already put your trust in this trustworthy guide. You've already experienced his protection and his rescuing, but today your strength is wavering and your concerns are mounting. I want to gently encourage you that you have reserves of resilience inside of you that have come from experiences that you have gone through in the past, experiences that may have been really horrible, but that you actually got through don't worry if you feel weak now, because God has promised that at our weakest time, he will show us his incredible strength to lead us on. Some of you who are watching, you might never have considered following God as your trustworthy guide. Well, today is a chance to reset things. He knows you so well, and he would love to offer you his hand to lead you forward to be a light in front of you and around you, not just during the crisis of COVID-19, but for the rest of your life. He really is who you need. He is the one who can lead the blind by ways they have not known. He is the one that will take them along unfamiliar paths, who will guide them. He will turn darkness into light before them and make the rough places smooth. There was a path that Jesus walked when he was about 33 years old. It was a very unfamiliar, difficult path which he walked alone. It led him to a cross. This morning, we're going to remind ourselves about the cross and what Jesus did there for us. And as we do this, if you have never asked God to be your guide, but you really want to, just talk to him in the way that you want, because he is listening. Thank you.